Hello, welcome to Biohacking Life Hacks. So this is my podcast uh, because I'm a biohacker and I love finding out and optimizing everything I do. So in terms of sleep, exercise, eating, everything, cooking, you name it. And uh, so, but I'm like, I can't be the only one that loves to optimize their life, their, what they do and everything. And so I've gone out looking for other people. And today we have a Dr. Katie Nell, uh, who's uh, who's optimized her life, and so we're going to find out how she's done that and what we can gather from that and learn from that. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's so that's my introduction. And uh, so, Katie, tell me about Dr. Katie Nell. Who is Dr. Katie Nell? Well, Joe, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I love the phrase biohacking. I do that all my life. I, um, I tell everyone that I'm lazy and my husband gets mad whenever I say that. I'm like, no, I'm always looking for the simplest solution, right? <laughs> but now I'm going to say I'm biohacking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give it a second. So, Go on. Yeah. So, um, Joe, I was a late in life a college student returning in my mid fifties to earn my PhD in math education. And one of the things I wanted to work with is as an administrator at a college where I had a room full of students who were ready to graduate, but they had one class left to finish. And that one class was mathematics. Now I'm a mathematics major. So when they would tell me that they had one math class left to finish, I would say, that's great. You saved the best for last. Well, they didn't <laughs> feel that way. <laughs> so I wanted to help these students be able to accomplish their dreams, right? How can, how can we help them get moving so that they can finish the math class, finish their degree, go out and get the career of their lives and, and enhance their life? That's the whole idea. As part of my dissertation research, I was looking for how do you help people overcome fear and anxiety in mathematics? And you know what I found, Joe? Nothing. There's like nothing what? out there. Yeah. There was, there's all these hints, uh, these biohacks of uh, getting through the math class, but there was nothing out there that would help me take the student out of total, absolute fear to just register for the class. They had been so traumatized by so many things in their lives that registering for the class was even overwhelming. So I recognized my question as a math word problem, and I pulled out what I needed, which was what was the most relevant, how to overcome fear and anxiety. So in 2010, I was like, how do you overcome fear and anxiety? And here's where the biohack comes in, is that in 2010, I listened to Nick Ortner's 10-day summit on tapping. It's called Emotional Freedom Technique, EFT. So I listened to all 10 days. Joe, they talked about relationships. They talked about finances. They talked about everything else. Nobody talked about math. Nobody talked about test taking. So I had no idea if this was going to work or not. But what I did have was a room full of really frustrated and and anxious students. And because they were that way, they would try anything, right? And because they would try anything, I'd say, well, I have no idea if this is gonna work or not, but let's try it. So one by one, they'd come in my office and we'd do our little tapping thing. And they would come out and say, well, that was strange. And I said, yeah, it was strange, but see how it works. So I just waited. I sat back and waited. And eventually, one by one, they would come back and they go, I'm not really sure, but I think I'm passing my math class. You are? <laughs> Joe, I had no idea who was more surprised, them or me. Because <laughs> we didn't know if it was going to work or not. Once I figured out it was going to work and I saw how powerful tapping was in so many different instances, I decided I wanted to teach the world. Hmm? So I went out and I got level one, level two, level three. And I kept saying, what do I have to do to train others? What do I have to do to be able to get this message across to others? And they said, well, you have to keep going. 
So I kept going and I now know picture tapping. I do quantum tapping, which is very interesting because that goes back into past lives. Uh, there's some interesting stories in there. Um, became a supervisor, a mentor, and now I can train others in how to do tapping. Now I know you're over there in the UK, Joe, and in the UK, tapping is well respected. And so you've probably heard of it before, but over here in America, it's still considered a little mm, challenging. My first TEDx talk, when I talked about tapping with math students, it is out there and it does have over 100,000 views because I found out some colleges are recommending their students uh, watch it before they go to their class. But even Ted gave me a warning on there that it's not really accepted. When it's proven, I mean, we have 40 years of clinical studies, randomized studies, where they've shown that tapping is more effective than cognitive behavior therapy, talking therapy, and just as effective as something called EMDR, eye movement desensitization reprogramming. The difference is with EMDR, you have to be sitting right in front of a therapist in case you have an abraction, that is in case you go back into your trauma. But with tapping, why, you can have a regular old mathematician working over Zoom, working with you. And it is amazing. If you're up for it, Joe, we can actually do a practice one. Well, now that you mention it, I <laughs> one of my uh, fantasies, <laughs> I'm going to call it a fantasy, is one day I'd love to finish like, uh, like an A-level maths because oh. maths is uh, like... I am also one of those students. Like I, I, um, I avoided math like the plague because it, the, the, I think it, maybe it was a teacher's. You know, just it wasn't fun. You know, it was boring. Uh, I'd fall asleep in it. it like I was like, okay, you know, like it was. Um, and so, I, but I know, like the whole of our society, the underlying structure, and the whole of the universe, the underlying structure all works on math. You know, like yeah. everything, everything works on math. It's like the the rules of life, society, everything. And so everything. I know that it would be really useful for me to really understand math. Um, but I've somehow always kept putting it off. You know, like it's just always been, uh, it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll look at that some other day. But yeah, I'd love to just know like math to a, like a high degree, like an A-level student type level, you know, not for any job or anything like that, just for myself so that I just can just understand uh, things better and be able to, you know, manipulate numbers and things like that. That Yeah, so, yeah, it'd be would great. You like, yeah, would you yeah. like a quick demo? Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a series of questions that I know you're a little familiar with tapping, but I'll, I'll, I'll treat you as if, you don't know anything about tapping so that the audience can understand a little better. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Joe, when you think about math, uh, when was the last time that you thought about math or that you were comfortable with math? Um, it was a long time ago. I, I remember doing um, that before GCSEs. You know, uh, that's how um, I started. Before that, I remember maths used to be fun. Um, but then, yeah, and then in school and college, something went wrong and it just became this hard work, you know, like this laborious thing that you had to do. It was. Um, so you were in college? Yeah, I would say it, it okay. would have been college. Yeah, yeah. It was just boring. I, was, I remember okay. it. So when you were in college and math was boring, and when you think about it now, today, when you think about college math, what negative emotion comes up? It's complicated. Complicated. So how does yeah. that make you feel inside? Uh, it makes me feel oh, I'm not going to get this. This this is going to be this is going to be hard work. You know, like uh, that. I'm not. Yeah, it's okay. too complicated. Okay, so it makes you feel like you're not here. I'm I'm not uh that I'm not I, I I'm not good enough to be able to do that because it's just too complicated. 
Do you know, okay. like, um, yeah. Okay. And from zero to 10, where zero is like, of course I can do math. And 10 is the most that you felt that you weren't good enough. What number would you say when you're thinking about it right now? So zero is where I can't do it at all. And, and no, is, zero is oh, when you, when can you have do no it. problems with math. Oh, so right, 10, okay. 10 would be the... I'd say I'm about a seven. Yeah. A seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And when you think about math and the fact that you feel like you are not good enough from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes, where do you feel that feeling of I'm not good enough in math because it's so hard? Uh, in my chest area. In your chest. Okay. Yeah. And um, is this a true statement right here, right now? I feel safe. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. And then the last question is, I'm going to, um, first of all, we'll do it just by uh, tapping on our body. And then we're going to add words. When I add words, if I ask you to say something and I get it and it's not quite right, would you change it into your own words for me? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So for your listening and watching audience, we'll kind of go through all the places that we're going to tap and then we'll add the words. So um, it doesn't matter. Hold one hand in front of your face. So you're looking at the palm and then between your wrist and your little finger, use your other uh, four fingers of your other hand to tap right there on the side. Now, Joe, when we add the words, we're going to uh, repeat the sentence three times there. OK, and then we're going to move from there to the very top of our head. And you can use one hand or the other hand or both hands and tap on the top of your head. So you wanna tap on the top of your head. And then from the top of your head, we're gonna to go to above your nose on the edge of your eyebrow. So I'm gonna go in for a close up. I'm warning you. So above your nose on the edge of your eyebrow. There you go, you got it. And again, you can use the right side or the left side or both, it doesn't matter. And then on the side of the eye between the eye and the temple or the eye and the hairline right on the temple, right there, uh-huh. We're gonna tap right there. And then the next spot, Joe, is where I keep all my bags for a quick getaway. And that's under my eyes. So <laughs> tap under your eyes. <laughs> and then the next spot is under your nose. We're gonna tap under our nose, right above our lips. And then under our lips, above our chin, which tap there. And then we're gonna cross our wrist with our palms facing us and tap on our collarbone. And you can breathe as we're doing this. And then the last spot, Joe, is about four inches under our arm. We're gonna give our ribs a little thumping. So we'll thump on our ribs and you can use one hand or the other or give yourself a tug or come in from the side. It doesn't matter as long as you're thumping on that. So those are the eight spots that we're gonna tap for this quick round of tapping. Now let's add some words, okay? So start on the side of the hand and repeat after me, correcting me if I get anything wrong. Say, even though. Even though. I remember math in college. Even though I remember math in college. It was hard. It was hard and boring. And boring. <laughs> boring. It was boring. Great. Thank you. Uh, and when I think about it today. And when I think about it today. It makes me feel like I'm not good enough to do it. It makes me feel like I'm not good enough to do it. And I can feel it in my chest. And I can feel it in my chest. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Right here, right now, I feel safe. We'll do, do that two more times, even though. Even though. I remember college math. I remember college math. It was so boring. It was so boring. And thinking about it today. And thinking about it today. I think I might not be good enough to do it. I think I might not be good enough to do it. And I feel that in my chest. And I feel that in my chest. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Last time, even though. Even though. I remember doing math in college. I remember doing math in co college. It was so boring. It was so boring. And thinking about it today. And thinking about it today. I just feel like I'm not good enough to do it. I just feel like I'm not good enough to do it. And I feel that in my chest. And I feel that in my chest. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. 
right here, right now, I feel safe. And then on the top of your head, we're going to say, not good enough in my chest. Not good enough in my chest. And then above your nose, on the edge of your eyebrow, not good enough in my chest. Not good enough in my chest. And then on the side of your eye, on the temples, not good enough in my chest. Not good enough in my chest. And then under your eyes, not good enough in my chest. Not good enough in my chest. Under your nose, not good enough in my chest. Not good enough in my chest. Under the lips, not good enough in my chest. Not good enough in my chest. And then on your collarbone, not good enough in my chest. Not good enough in my chest. And then tapping your ribs, not good enough in my chest. Not good enough in my chest. And then put your hands on your shoulders and we're gonna blow our air out like a, a cartoon character. It goes like this. <laughs> That was really good. <laughs> wow. Now, Joe, when you think about uh, college math, where, how does your chest feel? And from zero to 10, where zero is like, I've got this. And 10 is, I am, there's no way I'm going to be good enough to be um, in math. How's it feel now? I think it's like a five or a six. So you would just keep doing this until it got to zero. Is that where you're going to? Exactly. All right. And then, and, uh, and what, would you do it every day or how does it work? Well, what's interesting about it, Joe, is that this biohack is uh, once you can uh, get it down to zero, that particular aspect does not return. Now, let me explain that a little bit further. I had a client who was over six feet tall. He was a retired uh, Air Force officer who was now working his farm. And he came to me and he said, I hate spiders. Now, he had a large farm. There were spiders everywhere. And I said, OK, what is it about spiders that you don't like? He said, I can't stand their webs. And every place I go, there's webs I'm walking into and they just they're so creepy. So we tapped on the fact that he hated the spider's webs, right? I saw him a few weeks later and I said, hey, how's it going with the spiders on the farm? He said, I hate them. I said, wait a minute. I thought we got finished with all that. What happened? He said, oh, I have no problem with their webs now. I said, well, what is it? He said, I hate the way they walk. They're just so creepy. So what had happened is we had cleared it with the webs, but there was another aspect part of it that didn't that needed to be cleared. And I said, so let's schedule you another time. And he's like, nah, I can deal with it. So when you clear an aspect of a problem, that aspect, that part of it will not return. Ah, okay. Uh, if you don't mind, I have this one thing I've been trying to achieve. Uh, it's quite a simple, well, uh, you'd think it was, uh, but I, yeah, I have been, um, so one of my things I'm trying to do, what I'd love to do, is I'd love to do like a three-day water-only fast, um, but I've never managed to get to three days. I've gotten to two and a half days and all that kind of stuff, but I've never gotten to three days. Um, so I'd love to do a, a tap. I don't know how you would, what the... Yeah, yeah. Do you want to do it right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it would be really good. And on, uh, on, um, I'd love to do like a full three day water only fast. That'd be like, I would be, so, I would be God basically. That's it. So you're saying it's a three day, and what is it that happens in three days? So basically, what happens is when your digestive system shuts down, uh, your body starts healing. And what it does, the, the healing process just gets more and more accelerated. Like after 20 hours, it goes up a level. And then after 30 hours, it goes up another level. And then after 40 hours, it goes up another level. And so if to do like a, a like, so there's this, I don't know if you've heard of it, intermittent fasting, all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's so, a three day fast. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. So basically where you only drink water for three days. Okay. So you don't want me to tell you how unhealthy that is. <laughs> oh, I, 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 in the past, I've done 21 day water fast. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay. So, 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 so there's tons of science. To be, I, I mean, I can tell you about fasting. It will change your life. 
there's so much science like the like uh, the Russians did loads of experiments on it and they found that if, if you if somebody just didn't eat for 25 days and just drank water it doesn't matter what disease you had it disappeared hmm. you know like okay. it, it's like the the ultimate biohack basically um, okay. yeah so you want so you want to do a three-day fast is that what you're saying yeah okay water, so water, you water only fast because you you can okay. do without water, water, you fast. can you can do without food but water you need right of course so so um so when you think about when was the last time you were um upset about not doing a three-day fast ah uh, that would have been so i that was the other not this weekend last weekend i did a two-day fast right okay uh and i was annoyed because so what happens ah. uh, so what happens is um because I still continue normal life, I'll end up in situations where there's food and there's where there's, um, you know, go on. It's only okay. it's only one piece, you know, like and then yeah, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So it was last weekend. And yeah. when you think about last weekend now, is the feeling that you're having annoyed? I, I Yeah, I mean, it's a, it is annoying when uh, like something goes wrong, you know, like. You, you'll tempt me in some way you know or i'll be at okay. a party and there's a buffet and uh, I know, yeah and so uh when you think about last weekend and how you got two days instead of three days and the feeling of being annoyed where is that where do you feel that feeling in your body i think it's in my head yeah. in your head Okay. And from zero to 10, where zero is like, oh, it's no big deal. Anybody can do this. And 10 is the most annoyed you've been about anything in your entire life. What number is it? I'd say it's an 11. 11. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. proper annoyed. Yeah. Okay. I think, well, let's I think start. annoyed let's... isn't a strong enough word. <laughs> okay. So is there another word that better describes I, I would say, I would just say pissed off. Pissed, pissed off. off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 And is it pissed off still on your head? Yeah, yeah, it is still in my head. Okay, let's do this. You ready? Yeah, okay. Okay, so even though. Even though. I tried the three-day water only fast again last weekend. I, I, I tried the three-day um, water only fast uh, last weekend. And I didn't get through it. And I didn't get through it. And thinking about it now. And thinking about it now. I am so pissed off in my head. I am so pissed off in my head. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Even though. Even though. In my head. In my head. I am so pissed off thinking about last weekend. I'm so pissed off thinking about last weekend. I didn't make it through the three days. I didn't make it through the three days. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Even though. Even though. In my head. In my head. I am so pissed off. I am so pissed off. Because I didn't make it through the three days last weekend. Because I didn't make it through the three days last weekend. I only made it two days. I only made two days. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Right here, right now, I feel safe. And then top of your head. Pissed off in my head. Pissed off in my head. Edge of the eyebrow. Pissed off in my head. Pissed off in my head. Side of the eye. Pissed off in my head. Pissed off in my head. Under the eye. Pissed off in my head. Pissed off in my head. Under the nose. Pissed off in my head. Pissed off in my head. Under the lips. Pissed off in my head. Pissed off in my head. On the collarbone, pissed off in my head. Pissed off in my head. And then under the arm, pissed off in my head. Pissed off in my head. And then your hands on your shoulders and we'll blow her out. <laughs> Take a sip of water. Now from zero to 11, how pissed off are you in your head now when you think about last weekend? Say five, eight.
So if you replay this video yeah. and do it again, you can keep doing it until you get to a zero. Now, what, we, what we've done is we've worked on the uh, emotion of pissed off. You may have other emotions associated with that, um, with not being able to complete the three days. Yeah. So you would work on each individual emotion. Okay. Be, um, what's the science behind this, by the way? What's the... Um, there, there I, cause, is, cause, because I'm a biohacker and everything we do, uh, there's a lot of science behind it, you know, like a ton. There, yeah, there is a lot of science behind it. Um, first of all, the, ta the points that what you saw was what we call the basic round. There's many more things that we can do. Um, uh, many more points on our body that we can do. They're all based on traditional Chinese medicine and uh, the endpoints of meridians. Um, they have found that when we're stressed or feeling uncomfortable, that our cortisol and adrenal levels will go up, right? And that tapping can reduce the cortisol levels alone by 42% in less than an hour. That's a huge jump. There are so many uh, researchers that are doing work on trying to identify exactly what's happening so we can replicate it. What we have found is that in a very short period of time, people can regain, regain control of their emotions and bring in their parasympathetic nervous system. We do know that when you're running on your sympathetic nervous system, your stress, uh, your fight, flight, freeze, or fawn system, that you are not as capable of completing things as you are when you're running on your parasympathetic. And we can bring your parasympathetic nervous system into play very quickly with tapping. Uh, okay, and, and how does it rewire the brain, you know, like, uh, and so that you don't do it in the future, like more a day after, you know, next month? So um, the uh, amygdala part of our brain, right, is our, um, controls our survival. And, excuse me, when we have something that threatens our survival, uh, our prefrontal cortex is like, oh, I know I can handle this, I can do this. But our amygdala keeps us from, from even getting to the prefrontal cortex because it hijacks everything, right? And when we, when we tap, it's uh, almost, to me, this is a non-scientific version. I feel like I'm going back to my amygdala and saying, you know, you are basing information based on when I didn't have other tools that I've, cre I've created and accomplished um, later in life. Because the amygdala is like your lizard brain, right? It just remembers when you were five years old and something happened. And when that something happened, it, it tuned into every five, every one of our five senses about what's going on right then so that it, if the, any of those things are happening right now, it's, it's signaling danger, danger, danger. So I may have been five years old and in a building that caught fire. And in the corner, there was a red trash can. And every time I walk into a room and in a corner, there's a red trash can. I don't know why, but I feel uncomfortable. And it's because my amygdala is saying danger, danger, danger. When I'm not in danger, because my amygdala only knows based on those five senses when I was in danger. <laughs> so in order to get past the amygdala to the um, prefrontal cortex, we have to reassure it. <laughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're not quite sure exactly how this is all happening in the brain. We just know it's incredibly effective. I, I was just thinking, um, you know, uh, like most people, uh, they worldwide, I would say that people have, um, I'm not good enough. Um, that's a big one. Um, it's a success of failure. Of, I mean, fear of failure, fear of success. Right now, so is there a is there a like a standard tapping for those three that you could do? Just curious. Because that's like everywhere. Out, yeah, as it turns out, Joe, although those are very common, what we call global beliefs, <laughs> each person has had a different path to get to those global beliefs. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. 
And so that's why the individual part um, has to be individualized. You know, for you, it was not getting past a two day fast. For somebody else, it might be a math. For somebody else, it might be um, uh, not being able to uh, be accepted by friends. So that's why tapping, the power in tapping happens when it's specific to the individual. Uh And and what is this thing called? Like, so if I was to hire a a, a tapping therapist, is that what they're called or what are they called? It's called Emotional Freedom Technique, EFT or tapping. So those are three names. I, I've heard of known. I have I have I've heard of EFT. Okay, yeah. I just it's a know brain before. brain based somatic therapy. Okay, uh, so those are big words. <laughs> somatic. What does somatic mean? Somatic means it incorporates the mind and the body. Okay, okay the connection between the two. Okay, yeah. all right. Because all right. we do know that trauma holds itself in our body and so we have to release it from our body uh-huh. and so you're a, um an eft therapist tapping, <laughs> ther- tapping therapist no i'm not a therapist i'm a trainer <laughs> a trainer and a practitioner and there's somebody who's got a, a frog in her throat <laughs> okay. so what's the difference between like so do you train other people to be eft Yes. People. Yes, I can train others, and um, and I also have a practice, so I can I can work with clients. I'm a mathematician. My PhD is in mathematics education. I'm not a therapist, but the beauty of tapping is that it's something that the client themselves can do, mm-hmm. and I love that part. It's non invasive, non addictive, and self administered. Yeah, that, I I like the fact that you you can do it on yourself. Yeah. You know, um, and if, if it was simple enough to learn, you know, like, and see, so, but so, the, so there's a formula to, you've got to know where it is in your body. Um, and you've got to be able to think of the last time it happened. Whatever. So those six questions that I asked you are the same yeah. questions that people can ask themselves. Now, sometimes um, you can't do it on yourself because the question, you're not going to ask yourself the same questions, right? Excuse me. Hmm. So sometimes working with a practitioner, you're going to get different information out. Hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. That's, that's very useful. Um, but yeah, so by, back to a biohacking. So this is your biohack in terms of, um, yeah. So you got this one. Do you have any other biohacks that you use in? in- oh, I have thousands. <laughs> what ones do you use that you find the most useful to yourself? So um, I use tapping a lot. Um, I'm also a Qigong instructor. Okay. <laughs> so I use Qigong for um, exercising my internal organs. Um, I um, a nutrition biohack is every morning I have uh, 16 ounces of lemon water mm, followed, nice. followed by 16 ounces of celery juice. Wow, okay. I see that that's the bit I don't understand. The, the, you guys can use the word answers, you know, it's like we're like, okay. <laughs> what, what is it, you know, like, um, yeah, okay. 16 ounces, so is, is that a lot or, or a small amount? Or, uh, it's uh, like a full glass. Okay, okay, so that's 16 ounces, fair enough, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so that would be like 500 um, milligrams for us. CC, yeah, milligrams, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All right, okay, so that makes sense, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, because I, I do that, uh, not every day, but I, I'll have a uh, lemon water, um, I don't know, maybe a couple of times a week it happens. Uh, but so, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, go on. Lemon, wa- lemon water first thing in the morning activates your liver and helps the sluggish liver. So it's it's a good thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah to wake up your liver. In terms of that, one of the 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 uh, biggest biohacks you can do, like a really good one, is um, is is the best breakfast is just that. In fact, nothing else is not to eat before twelve. That's like that's like a really big biohack. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do that for a couple of weeks, it changes your life. Huh. Yeah, 
it's um yeah. there's tons of science behind it like tons oh. um but which i could go through if, if it went you know at the end if you if you're interested uh, but yeah, so so qigong, okay. Because I, okay. I, I do I do yoga and meditation, and I've done a little bit of tai chi. Uh, yeah. qigong is the same same sort of thing, I think. Tai chi is a derivative of qigong, and tai chi is very yeah. formulated, whereas qigong is a little more loose. Okay, okay, and and mm-hmm. and I've come across uh, Chinese people where they do uh tapping their um hitting you know like that you know yeah and yeah well, what does that do that does that um so again these are different organs so if you tap on your waist that's your liver channel your ribs are your spleen channel and that's actually good for your immune system mm. under your arm is your heart channel and on your elbow is your heart channel so they're all related to traditional Chinese medicine meridians. Okay, because yeah. uh, um, I've come across somebody who every morning um, taps his entire body, you know, like everywhere. Yeah. Uh, spends like literally 10 minutes just doing that. And the reason, and the reason why they do that is because tapping creates an effect called piezoelectric. I am so sorry, Joe. My throat is just um, misbehaving. <laughs> um, but when you tap, you're actually creating electrical charge in your body. And science has shown that healthy cells have a higher electrical charge than disease cells. So, so tapping and uh, creating that um, effect throughout your body is uh, creating electrical charge. All right. Okay. Ah, that's that's useful to know. Yeah. All right. I'm going to incorporate that in some way. Because, <laughs> because I, I have this biohack where uh, uh, before I even get out of bed, so I wake up, and as soon as I wake up, within uh, what I'll do is I'll do um, I do this practice. It's about twenty minutes uh, where I do a lot of physical exercise in bed, um, so I get my my workout done in bed. Um, with breath work, uh-huh. um, and so that when you combine the two, it, it, it sort of has a you know synergistic effect. So like before I've even got out of bed, I've already done my breath work and I've already done my physical exercise. You know, like that's it. So when I uh, first wake up, the first thing I do is think about all the things I'm grateful for. That, that that's another one I do is I think of all the things that I love and that yes. loves me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and when I first started doing it, I'd be thinking about things out there. Oh, I love this or I love that. But what I found was that naturally I just went to one thing and it was like, oh, I love God and that's it, you know? Um, and God loves me and yes. I'm God and, you know, God is yeah. me, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah. I, I'm, I come from the background of uh, yoga Tantra, Eastern, Eastern mysticism, and all that kind of stuff. And in the, all of this, Eastern mysticism, you and God, and God and you are one and the same. There's no, right. there's no difference. Like, right. You, you right. wouldn't be able to separate the two out. Uh, and so, like every human being, every man is a, is a, is a, is an encapsulation of, um, I think that's the wrong word, of, of Lord Shiva, because he's the ultimate, you know, being. And every mm-hmm. woman is uh, is is uh, is Shakti. Yeah. yeah. So and so the whole universe is created from from Shiva Shakti, um, Yin and Yang. You know that. So, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So and um, what what other biohacks do you have that I could? Uh, oh, um, so uh, I wrote a book called Shower Blessings. <clears> hey. <throat> um, where. For people who feel like they don't have time to meditate, meditating in the shower. And um, so I give examples of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and what, what is, how do you do shower blessing? blessing? So while you're in the shower, um, mostly you don't think about anything, right? But that's a good time to have a conversation with um, spirit universe, God, uh, and, 
So, so it was shower blessing. So what, what you just talked to yourself, are you were saying? Well, in a way, um, one of the, one of the uh, biohacks I have in the book is that when you have conversations outside of yourself, that you should meditate a lot, uh, A-L-O-T. And by that, I mean, you should um, be brave enough to ask, that's the A, <laughs> for what you really want. I think about when my kids were young, that I knew they needed food, I knew they needed clothing, I knew they needed love, but how would I have ever known that they wanted a red wagon unless they asked for it? So so you mean mean ask yourself, is that what you mean? Well, no, we're asking uh, God, the spirit, universe. Oh, I see, okay. Okay, so ask for what you really want and be very specific. I know um, one of the things that I had written in one of my vision statements was that um, I wanted flowers throughout my house. Well, Joe, I had envisioned uh, bouquets of roses and daisies and things like that. And one day I was looking around. I'm like, where are my flowers? I, I don't understand what happened to my flowers. And then I realized my husband had developed this ha- this hobby of um, collecting orchids. And I looked around the house and there were orchids everywhere. And I was like, oh, all I had said was flowers in the house. And so when you ask, be very specific, right? <laughs> so, so, so what, um, now this is really interesting because so what you want, every day you ask for whatever you want. Exactly, Always. exactly. And be very specific. But then when you think about meditate a lot or pray a lot, the L is that it's a conversation. So the L means to listen. So you have to listen for what's coming back. And in my book, I give examples of I actually have heard voices giving me directions. And if I don't listen, then what I ask for sometimes doesn't come through. Or I may have no idea why I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do. The O in a lot stands for obey. Hard thing for me to do, Joe. Um, Whenever I listen and whatever I hear back, I have to obey. And when I obey it, then, then things come about. And then the last one is T, thanks, give thanks. It doesn't matter what happened, whether I think it's, it's positive or negative, good or bad, to always give thanks regardless of what happens. I had a car accident um, and uh, my son and I were in the car. This woman pulled out in front of me. I I couldn't do anything. I just ran right into her. And the first thing I thought of is, well, thank you. I don't know why. I mean, why why to have this car accident? I went to pick up the car after it had been fixed. And the the mechanic said to me, "Um, boy, lady, are you lucky? And I said, yeah, I know. I mean, you know, we could have been hurt or something. He's like, no. He said, your front axle, you know, that holds the wheels together, was ready to to completely fall apart. You could have been on the highway and you would have lost your front axle and had a horrible accident. But because you ran into this lady, her insurance paid for all of that to be replaced. And uh, right and who would have thought that that accident would have been something to give thanks for? So it doesn't matter what happens, always to give thanks. So ask, listen, obey, give thanks. And what was your book called again? Shower Blessings. Shower and it's on available on Amazon, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. And and you have a website as well, right? Well, yes. Um, I I'm a bit of a punster. So my last name is Nall, N-A-L-L. So I added the word edge, E-D-G-E. So my website is knowledgecompany.com. So it's N-A-L-L-E-D-G-E-C-O.com. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll put all the links uh, below and I'll put a link to your um, uh, book as well. Wow. Okay. That's it. And have you written any other books? I have two books that I am writing right now. One is on emotional wealth and um, and the other one is, <laughs> excuse me, racing to the red light. We're always in a hurry to get to where we need to go. Well, and, I, I live in London and uh, <laughs> yeah, the biggest problem they have here is um, 
you know, everything is going too slow. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean, like, the, the thing that annoys Londoners the most is, like, tourists, because they, they don't move as quickly. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, they're too busy looking around. And yeah, <laughs> they're too busy enjoying the scenery. They're too busy, yeah. like, living in the moment. Like, what the hell is wrong with them? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's what it is, you know, and they should be going somewhere. I don't care where they're going. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Uh, so, so where are you in America? You're... Um, I'm in Florida. Um, I'm on the East Coast on the ocean side. And um, yeah, we've been here for about 40 years. Is that like near West Palm Beach or Dock? Yeah, Florida, I'm just north, north of West Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, good. Because uh, before lockdowns, I used to come to uh, West Palm Beach quite a bit. Uh, I used to come for two weeks every year. Oh. Uh, because in uh, West Palm Beach, I think it's over Christmas or summer well our christmas i think something like that anyway um tony robbins comes to west palm beach i don't know if yeah. you've heard of him i have i have oh, read his have. books mm -hmm. all right yeah. okay. next time you come into west palm beach holler yeah it's definitely. about an hour it's about an hour drive from me and my one of our sons lives in west palm <laughs> oh nice yeah because what we do is we rent a, an apartment uh with swimming pool everything and uh, we but we come like a week early, and then we stay like a week late, and then we nice. just we just have a really good time. Good. Uh, so I've done. I'm a Tony Robbins fan. So I've done. I've done his entire program, uh, and now I crew for him as well. So, uh, good for you. It's it's like the best holiday in the world, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Have you ever done any of his events? Uh, no. Mm -mm. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've read a lot of his books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I before I did his uh, his seminar, I used to think seminars were overrated, expensive, mm -hmm. scams. There's no way they can do anything in four days and all that kind of stuff, and they're just charging too much. They're rip off merchants, you know the whole works. And then in 2014, uh, was it 2000? Oh no, 2015. I went and I paid good money. I think I paid. Three thousand dollars or three and a half thousand uh, dollars to do his four day event in uh, in New York, the first one. Oh my God, it just blew blew me away, like to an insane level. Like for the next six months, I was a Duracell battery, you know. <laughs> Did you walk the coals? Yeah, so I've done the uh, fire walk about four or five yeah. times now. It's now it's I, I don't really it's no it's no big deal. Like you've done it so many times now. It's like you right. just there's no because before I remember the first time there's like four hours of preparation to do the firewalk literally, um, and then the it's so for for the participants it's a four hour preparation. It's a lot of preparation to get them ready for that. Um, but now that I've done four, I mean the fourth one, I was one of the crews uh, creating the the lanes, you know, the uh, for walking. And when it when it came to my turn, I was like, ah, yeah, I'm just walking across. I just walked across. Uh, it, it, it it's like it, it, it's it's strange. Like, it doesn't burn you. It doesn't burn you. But yeah, I don't know. yeah, it's just one of those things, I suppose. Right? Um, yeah. Okay. So um, so what what else was there? Oh, that was a question I I've been meaning to ask you. Um, you one of the questions I ask, and I usually ask this at the beginning, right, <laughs> uh, rather than at the, towards the end, is well, what's your definition of success? How do you, what does success feel and look like to you, you know? So I lean on Ralph Waldo Emerson's um, definition of success. <laughs> Can I go get it real quick and um, read it to you? Just yeah, yeah, go for it.
Thank you. I um, I should memorize it, but his definition of success is to um, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, <laughs> to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, <clears throat> a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because I have lived. That is success. Wow. That is a very complete. <laughs> right? I love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I have, have it by my bedside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you were like, do, do you have kids? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, like, uh, so if you were to have kids, what would you want your those your kids to know? What 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 would you pass on to your kids in terms of uh, you know, rather than money, what what are they? What do you want them to you know to know to be whatever? So, Joe, I think that I love this phrase. Um, this too shall pass. And to me. When we have great things that are happening that are fabulous, to live it and love it in the moment because it won't last. And that when you're going through trying times that um, are causing you pain, to know that you can allow it to pass. Because, you know, the word emotion is energy in motion. As long as we allow it to pass, we can go back to a state of homeostasis. Mm. That's a that's a very uh, profound Buddhist um, saying. <laughs> um, the only constant is change. Right. Everything mm -hmm. else is uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's um, that's really do and. Uh, how do people connect with you, do you know? Like, and, and why would they connect you and what do they be looking for? Oh, well, they should call me to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> so they can email me at hello at drnall.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at D-R-N-A-L-L.com. Um, and I will challenge your listeners, your watchers, your viewers to call me. I'm in America, so it's country code one. 772-226-0167. Love to talk to them. I'm on all social media as KD Nall, PhD. <coughs> and then reach out to me anywhere. All right. And, and do people just ring you out of the blue? Yeah. Wow. What's that like? It's... Oh, it's fun. It's yeah. fun. I get to meet new people and I love it. So your phone could ring, and it could be anybody from anywhere in the world. Yep. Okay, because because we're like like we you know normally in society it's like you protect your number, you protect your uh, you know like uh, so that uh, it, nobody can ring you unless they know who you are, you know, unless you've given them your number. So it's like a very private thing, your phone number. But for you, there you go. There's my number. Yeah. You're an alien on another planet, is my number. <laughs> Definitely. I want to hear from them. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they might be listening. They might be listening. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. That's great. I want to hear from them. <laughs> yeah, if you've got like 30 trillion <laughs> beings trying to ring you. <laughs> from right. the first Love it. Wow. Okay. And so you that that's that's very strange. Like I'm trying to get my head around it. That's very strange that you know, your numbers everywhere. So do you not get a lot of um, uh, sales calls? No. Okay. That is, you don't get people trying to somehow sell you things or anything like that. Wow. Okay. Why not? What's Because they the... put the energy out there that I only want to be associated with positive, wonderful people like you. Oh, right. Because, like, uh, because one of my problems is like, Every day, like probably once, at least once a day, I'll get a spam call. Do you uh, fuss about it? 
Um, I, I used to, and now I just uh, sort of I, I I try to have fun with this. But sometimes, well, it depends on my mood. Um, sometimes, if I'm in a rush or I'm or I'm hassled, and I'm and and I pick the phone up, and I know now because we get them so often here, or I get them so often, I don't know why. Um, I know within like ten seconds that it's a spam call. And so, like within, so if I'm in a good mood and I've got uh, time, I'll be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, all right, let's uh, let's let's play," you know. Um, and uh, but other times I'm like, "Oh man, what you you've just rung to waste my time? Are you kidding me? You know, like that kind of stuff, right? Really? Are you really gonna give me some shit on this now?" And then like take my number off that, and I just sort of yeah. So it depends on my mood, I think. Yeah. So it's the energy that you expend that it returns, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't give it any energy. Uh -huh, okay, fair enough. I will. Uh, I will try that. <laughs> no, because I do stand up comedy and uh, I bring it up oh. in my comedy, uh -huh. and so I, I and it's it, it has been useful. It gives me material, but other times I just go, ah, what the hell? You know, like when you get so many. You yeah. go. I, yeah, I don't want. Yeah, I don't really want to play. You know, so and so I just don't play. But yeah, okay. So and and what projects have you got coming up? Do you have any more books coming up in the future? Are you doing any? Yeah, more? we have. Um, well, I I do training on um, tapping, and I do that on Zoom. So if anyone's interested, they can join a tapping class. And I also have a retreat coming up, uh -huh. a very expensive retreat. Uh, <laughs> life-changing um coming up where there will be a specialist in uh past life regression a specialist in angel messengers um of course i'll be doing qigong and tapping and everyone will get a group and personalized attention uh tony robbins expensive right yeah yeah okay very good okay thank you very much for that that's brilliant. Um, I've, I'm hopefully, uh, in the next year or so, I will hopefully have done A level math or something equivalent. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, that would be just be so cool. Um, and uh, yeah, this has been this has been very interesting, very um, educational. Uh, I'm gonna look up EFT as well, um, and see if I can get my head around it um and the shower blessing i like the shower blessing and and that you ask for what you really want that's, that's mental uh, it's sure. such, so simple though you know like oh how are you ever gonna get what you want if you don't ask for right. it yeah right it, right but right. It, it's it seems counterintuitive but it isn't it's straightforward um yeah, yeah. okay so all right I'm going to add the shower blessings to my thing and I'm going to look up EFT. Um, and uh, yeah, I will. This has been brilliant. I, for my listeners, I'm sure this will be awesome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I hope um, I'm, I look, I hope if, if an alien rings you, ring me. Okay. <laughs> I'll let them know that they came straight from Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. If any of the aliens are listening, listening, and they ring you, I, I want them to mention that you know they got it from me. <laughs> they usually do. They tell me which podcast that they've heard it on. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It was it was the biohacking life hack podcast. Just in case they don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank enjoy. you, Joe. I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day, your life, everything. Thank you. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.